I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And our citation to all the Akim that's teaching this word in sincerity and truth. And uh, here we are in the so-called New Year, um, January 1st, all right, which we all know that's, uh, you know, more the so-called white man witchcraft, sorcery, you know. All right, us in the know, we know that the New Year come in during the spring, man, and not in the dead of uh, winter, man. But anyway, um, I'm gonna jump into I'm gonna jump into the, um, Isaiah chapter 34, and we are gonna uh, prove that uh, you know the the Most High Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is coming back to um, destroy people and not land, man. Okay, and I'm gonna start here in Isaiah chapter 34 and verse five, and it reads, "For my sword," talking about referring to who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, all right? Because he's the one that's coming with the sword, all right, to bring destruction upon uh, uh, the wicked man, all right, and two-thirds of his people, okay? So it says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. And Idumia is another way of saying Edom, just like a Greek way of saying the Edomites, man, which are the so-called white men, okay? So the Lord coming to bring the sword, destruction, okay, on Idumia, man, the Edomites, the so-called white man, all right, a.k.a. Babylon, the nation of Babylon, and upon the people of, of my curse to judgment, all right, and it's always dealing with people, all right? The sword of the Lord shall be filled with blood, it is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidney of rams, for the Lord have a sacrifice in Basra. All right. So the Lord have a sacrifice in Basra. And that uh, Basra is going back to the capital city um, of um, uh, Mount Seir, which was the land inheritance given to uh, the Edomites uh, by the Lord, man. Okay, so he says, For the Lord have a sacrifice in Seir and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. All right, in the land of Idumia, meaning the Idumians. Okay, now uh, I'm going to get a precept here in uh, Genesis chapter uh, 9 and verse 4. All right, and it reads, But flesh. With uh, Salakia, this Salakia, uh, nine and six, it says, Whoso sheddeth man blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For, for in the image of the power made he him. So, this is how uh, the Lord basically is going to cleanse this land, man. Let me get another precept um, to prove that point. But as I just read in Genesis. Chapter 9, all right, the blood of the man who spilled the Israelites' blood, man, that's who blood is going to be spilled, man. He's not coming back to, uh, uh, the Lord don't have indignation with a, with, with, with land, with the earth, okay? Uh, Numbers 35, 33, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Just like I read in Genesis 9 and 6. Okay? So, that's how the Lord is going to uh, cleanse this land, man. All right? With the blood of the so-called white man, the Edomites, the nation of Babylon. Okay? Uh, let's get one more scripture on that. Uh, Exodus chapter 21 and... Uh, Verse 16, and it read, And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So, going back to uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 34, and um, verse 5, it says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down 
upon Adumia. All right, why? Because Adum the Adumians, okay, they shed the blood of the Israelites, man. All right, and the Lord is coming back to avenge His people. All right, to take uh uh to take revenge upon uh the so-called white man, the Edomites. All right, not on a particular land. All right, because you know you got the so-called uh white man, the Edomites over there in Europe. All right, they're known as as the um, Europeans, okay? So, but that land wasn't uh, given to them as an inheritance. The Lord promised every nation that they're going to get their inheritance, man. All right, when, when he sent his son back and set this place in order. All right, so why would the Lord destroy that place? And it's not even uh, Edom uh, inheritance, man. All right, so he's coming back. Uh, to get the Idumians, man, okay, and upon the people, all right, because it's all about people, all right, not a land of my curse to judgment, for the sword of the Lord is filled with blood, all right, the blood of who? The Edomites, why? Because they shed the blood of the Israelites, and in order to cleanse the land, all right, the blood of him, the Edomites have to uh, be shed, man, okay, going back to the law. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and with fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord have a sacrifice in Basra, okay? Not on Basra. And a and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. <clears throat> um, verse 7. And the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls. And the land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. All right. And the land shall be, be soaked with blood. Why? Because that's what cleansed the land, man. All right. Going back to the law, like I read in um, Numbers chapter 35 and verse 33. And in Genesis 9 and 6. Okay. So now let's get another scripture. We're going to stay in the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> and we're going to get uh, chapter 63. And we're going to start at 1. And it reads, who is this that coming <clears throat> from Edom? All right. Who is this coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This, this that is glorious in his apparel, travailing in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness mighty to save. Referring to Yahweh Shai, of course. Um, read Norn. Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have tried the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger. Who was to them? Referring to the Edomites, man. And also two-thirds of Israel, man. Okay. And trample them in my fury. All right. And the them is referring to people, of course. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I shall stain all my raiment. For the for for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeem is come. All right, who's his redeem, man? Talking about the elect going back to um, Deuteronomy, all right? And I shall not uh, meet thee as a man, okay? Because it said, no man shall redeem thee, okay? Because he's coming back in his spiritual uh, form, man, okay? Uh, read 9, verse 5, and I looked, and there was none <clears throat> to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought Bought, bought salvation unto me and my fury it upheld me verse 6 and I will tread down the people in my anger okay he's not coming back to tread down land he's coming back to tread down the people all right in my anger and make them drunk in my fury and I will bring down their strength to the earth okay so uh, let's get the next scripture Revelations 18, verse 5. For her sins, 
Who is the her? Referring to Edom. All right. The nation of Babylon. All right. For her sins have reached up unto heaven and the power has remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she have filled filled to her double. And we just read the double, man. All right. How, how is Shai is coming back to tread upon them, man? All right. He says sword going to be filled with their blood, man. All right. His, his raiment's going to look dyed. Okay. Because all the blood that he's coming back to spill, to shed, man. Okay. Uh, let's get the next precept. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. And uh, verse 11, and it read, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Talking about Yahweh Shai and in righteousness, he doeth judge and make war because that's what he's coming back to do to make war. All right. With who all the uh, starting with the so-called white man and all the armies that's 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 um. That's uh, with them to fight the Lord, man. And we're going to read that. Uh, verse 12. Verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns because he's coming to take, uh, break the staff of the wicked, man. All right. Meaning take their crown. All right. Take them out of rulership. All right. And that will be the nation of Edom, man. All right, because they're the ones who currently rule in this earth. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vexture dipped in blood. All right, with the blood of the so-called white man. Okay. And his name is called the word of God. And the armies which were. And the army which were in heaven followed him upon the white horse, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Talking about his army, his thousands and thousands of angels. That's referred to in Psalms chapter 68. All right. Verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it it shall smite the nations. All right. People, not the land. And he shall rule them. With a rod of iron, and he treadeth the wine press of the fierceness of his wrath, the almighty power. Okay, so he's coming back to uh, smite the nations, man. Like I said, starting with um, two thirds of Israel, okay, and the so called white man, Babylon, who's known as Babylon. All right, I'm gonna get the next scripture, we're gonna prove that point. Uh, we're gonna stay in the book of Revelations. Verse 12, I mean, chapter 12, Salakia, verse 7. And it reads, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels, that's that army that followed Yahweh Shai. All right. Fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. All right. And that's, that dragon is referring to the nation of Edom. All right. And his angels, is his armies. All right. And all his other allies that's with him. Okay. Verse 8. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. All right. Now let's prove that that's talking about. Uh, well, we all agree that this is talking about the nation of Edom here in chapter 12. All right. When it says, uh, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any. More in heaven. Why? Because Babylon is falling. All right. And we're going to get it. Uh, Revelation 18. And um, we'll go to verse 21. Revelation 18, 21. And this is what it means when it says his place is not going to be found anymore in heaven. Meaning he's going to come uh, break the staff of the wicked. All right, come take their crown, take them out of rulership. All right, and to prove that that's referring to Babylon, okay, 
Let's uh, read 1824, I mean, 1821 in Revelations. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon, the nation of Edom, all right, that dragon, be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. All right, shall be found no more at all. Going back to Revelations uh, chapter 12 and verse 7. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Referring to the Edomites. Okay. Referring to the Edomites. Uh, verse 9. And the great dragon... All right, referring to the Edomites, referring to Babylon, was cast out that old serpent, which is called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels was cast out with him. All right. Now, let's go back to Revelations 18, where it's referring to uh, Babylon 18.23. And it says, and the light, and, and the light, and we're going to prove with this scripture how he deceived the nations. And the light of the can, of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. Why? Because he's, he's going to, um, the Lord is going to break the staff of the wicked, man. All right. How Lucifer, how Lucifer fallen, man. All right. It says, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Okay, by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Now let's go back to Revelations 12 and 9. And the great dragon, the Edomites, Babylon, was cast out that old serpent, which uh, uh, called the devil, the deceiver, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. All right, by his sorceries, man. All right, his witchcraft. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. Okay, uh, let's get one last scripture. We're gonna stay in the book of Revelations, chapter 17, and verse 5. And it reads, Upon her forehead. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay, now I'm going to get a scripture here in Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, where he's referring to the Israelites in that same manner, getting that mark upon their heads. All right, to show you that that's not talking about a place. It's talking about a people. Uh, Revelation 9 and 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city. All right. Go through the midst of the city. Because the scriptures is written. And it's poetry, man. The city is representing what? Israel. The nation of Israel. Okay. Through the midst of Jerusalem. And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. All right. So this is the opposite of what we just read in Revelation 17, 5. I'm going to read that again. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, which we all agree that that city is talking about Israelites, people, not the land. Okay. Through the midst of Jerusalem. All right. The Israelites. And set a mark upon the foreheads. And this is not talking about a physical mark, man. This is spiritual. All right. Which that mark uh, mean exempt from judgment, man. Meaning you're going to get pardoned, man. All right. Set upon the foreheads. Set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Now, going back to Revelation 17 and 5, all right, on the flip side, referring to the Edomites, it says, and upon her forehead 
was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay? And um, basically, that's the point. And I hope y'all brothers was edified with that. I'm going to say Shalom.